Chapter 21. A gorgeous chandelier. Expensive liquor set on the table. Vice Master Lee Minsung was heavily drunk in the VIP room again today. Normally, the room would have been busy with boisterous laughter and intimate skinship, but the atmosphere was different today for some reason. Clang! Ah! The lady entertaining him screamed in surprise at the sound of the glass he had thrown and shattered. Oh dear, why is our Minsung in such a bad mood today? After a while, a madam entered the room and sat gracefully beside him with a charming smile. At the same time, she gestured to all the other employees to leave. In the meantime, the ladies quickly escaped from the room, turning the room silent in an instant. Plop. The madam poured the wine into a new glass and glanced at Lee Minsung. He had been glaring at his phone with bloodshot eyes since earlier. What's going on? The madam glanced at the screen he was watching. Comments? The corners of the madam's eyes twitched slightly. So, who is the hunter who annihilated the hyena? Yeah, they said he went into Guanac Mountain alone and rescued everyone. Amazing. Who on earth is he? Info. It's said that he wore a mask, so even the survivors couldn't see his face. What a mysterious guy. Why hide his face after doing a good deed? Isn't it obvious? There's a rumor that the Fiend Guild backed the hyena, so of course he has to conceal his identity. Right? We may not know who he is, but I hope he never gets caught. The Fiend will retaliate immediately. Lol. There was still a lot of ruckus about the Guanac Mountain field on the internet. People were actively speculating about the identity of the hunter who solved the case alone, but there was just not enough evidence. But who could he be? Well, if he soloed a boss monster, he must be at least an A-rank hunter, right? You can theoretically finish that dungeon as a B-rank with good skills. No, even C or D rank is enough if you're skilled. D rank, haha. Oh, stop talking nonsense. Save that for your diary. Thousands, tens of thousands of comments were all curious about the identity of the hunter. While there was a lot of nonsense and jokes, the overall sentiment eventually boiled down to one sentence. A hero. As the heinous acts of the hyena guild were revealed one by one, as their image turned increasingly demonic, conversely, the public's fondness for the hunter who single-handedly wiped them out skyrocketed nationwide. What? You still haven't found out who he is? In an instant, Lee Min Sung's expression crumpled at the madam's words. Crete Lee Min Sung gritted his teeth and glared at the madam. Who are you teasing? Oh my, I'm not teasing. Obviously I'm worried. Our vice master's informants must have been struggling so badly to get hints that you start looking in the comments. Crete Crete. Oh, you'll hurt your teeth that way. More importantly, you told your informants to visit the survivors. What did they say? They used dual swords. Oh, they said they summoned magic beasts. Summons. Oh my. The madam covered her mouth with a surprised look at Lee Min Sung's answer. This is strange. Is there a hunter who can do such a thing among the summoners? There's none. None? It's absolutely impossible for a random summoner to kill that brokey. Lee Min Sung, who had seen the giant hyena brokey in person, was convinced. Someone must have used a skill to confuse the information. It could be an illusion skill, or maybe it wasn't just one person. The summoner could have been hiding in the background. No, it's certain. He was convinced that no individual could have caused this kind of incident, no matter how much he thought about it. In any case, there was one significant fact. Someone had killed Brokey with dual swords. Well, if that's the case, all you need to do is just hold the fact that they used dual swords. Right. So it means we don't have any information at all. Ah, that's a shame. The madam drank her glass of whiskey in one gulp with a disappointed both expression. I thought it was going to be something exciting because there was so much fuss. But all this is just because of drugs. How childish. But she understood. Lee Min Sung had always lived a life of success, from his birth to the present. When he was young, he was born into a wealthy family. As a young man, he became a Hollywood star. And when the great cataclysm occurred, he awakened as an A-class hunter. It was a solid path. By now, it was not an exaggeration to say that the entire universe revolved around Lee Min Sung. But suddenly, his driver becomes an S-class hunter. On the very day when Lee Min Sung awakened and the whole world was congratulating him, his longtime friend and driver, Lim Taegu, became an S-class hunter. At that moment, Lee Min Sung became blind with jealousy. 
the hierarchy that seemed unchangeable was suddenly overturned. Well, it's a good thing, though. There's no one easier to manipulate than someone with a complex. The madam gave a sly smile and poured some alcohol into Lee Minsung's glass. Don't get too worked up. You'll catch them eventually. More importantly, shall we talk about business now? Hmm. At those words, Lee Minsung's complexion became calm. Stardust. The madam asked with an alluring smile. Are there any defective products among the latest batch? There are no defects in the product. It's the people who ate it that are defective. People are defective? How defective do they have to be to die after taking the mana amplification drug? Others will be too scared to use it. Contrary to her words, the madam did not look frightened at all, and neither did Lee Minsung. How many people died? Well, I heard about 30 people, but strangely, only low-ranking hunters died. Are the people really defective? Only the low-rank hunters died. Indeed, it seems that Stardust is affected by a person's mana aptitude after all. Hmm. Lee Minsung focused only on the effect of the experimental drug with no emotions despite the fact that people had died. So, when will the next batch be available? The madam went further. Those who haven't died are waiting for the next batch. Soon, Lee Minsung coldly glared at the madam, who smiled and teased him. We'll hurry the demons up. At that moment, Suho was facing an important decision. You must select one of the two random boxes. Blessed random box provides the player with the desired item. Cursed random box provides the player with the necessary item. Which one would you like to choose? What I want and what I need. Isn't this just a play on words? These two hidden rewards may sound like a pun, but they have clear differences. Beru, who was watching from the side, explained further. What you want may not be necessary once you receive it. Conversely, what you need may give you something you don't want once you receive it. Ah, hence the name Cursed Random Box. Yes, that's right. For example, when you need a powerful weapon, a terrible bomb that will blow up everyone, including yourself, might come out. Is that even possible? It's a system passed down from my father. There's no way it would reward me with something dangerous for a quest, right? Kike. That's also true. Suho had no more hesitation. Cursed Random Box. Oh, that one? You're so daring. I don't really know what I want specifically, maybe because my level is still low, but there are too many things I need. He had no idea what kind of items were beyond the system, and the scope of his imagination was too vague. Suho smiled and chose the reward. Besides, my father knew better than anyone else what I needed since the old days. This reward is given by the system, not my liege. Well, that's the same thing, Suho retorted and held out his hand. Then a small box appeared on it. It was a box wrapped in solid-colored wrapping paper and tied with a ribbon. He carefully opened the box. Ding! You have obtained item Vulcan's horn. At that moment, the box disappeared, and a sword was in Suho's hand. What's this? Acquisition difficulty. Type sword attack plus 40. A sword crafted from the horns of the greedy demon Vulcan. It deals more damage imbued with Vulcan's power. Effect Destructive Urge increases physical damage by 30%. Effect Demon Devourer. The more you devour the souls of demons, the stronger Vulcan's power becomes. Devoured Demon Soul. As Suho read the item description, his eyes grew wider with excitement. It is a growth type item. Wow. The explanation of increases physical damage by 30% undoubtedly meant that the increase would increase as he hunted more demons. In addition, the basic attack power itself was a whopping ten higher than that of Rakan's fang. Ahem. However, I have the contempt for the weak and deadly strike effects, so if you look closely, I might be a little more... Beside him, Rakan's fang muttered something, but no one listened. This is amazing. The perfect item just came out. Suho smiled contentedly and lifted Vulcan's horn with one hand. Wong, as he swung it around once with great momentum, the sound of the wind cutting through the air was very intimidating. However, the weight of the sword was a bit heavy. Suho immediately invested all of his skill points, which he received as a daily quest reward, into strength, and as a result, it became much easier to handle. I really like it. Now all I need is a demon. But he had never heard of a dungeon with demon-type monsters recently. I think they were all defeated a long time ago. Should he go out and search the internet for more information? 
Suho immediately took out the key to the Shadow Dungeon. Swoosh. You have exited the Shadow Dungeon. However, when he came out, he saw that he had missed five phone calls on his cell phone. The caller was Assistant Professor Im. Why is Assistant Im calling me? Curious, he called him back and received an unexpected proposal. Suho, do you want to do a part-time job? Out of the blue? Yeah, some collectors who agreed to come suddenly went missing. Thank you so much for coming, Suho. Thanks to you, we're alive. Professor Assistant Im was so grateful that he prostrated himself before Suho, who arrived on time for the appointment. But there aren't many situations like this. Why did multiple people suddenly go missing today? Did you write up a contract? Right, that's why I don't understand. Assistant Im clenched his fists, thinking of the hunters who had gone missing without a word. Those guys are probably out there somewhere, drunk and passed out together. His anger was justified. Since the collectors and miners usually work in teams, in cases like this, the entire team would be fined for violating the contract. But now, there was nothing to worry about, because Suho had come to help. Assistant, Im placed his hands on Suho's shoulders and spoke earnestly, Suho, you have to be a real hero today. I believe in you. What he believed in was none other than Suho's summoning skills. Didn't Suho's summoned magic beasts play a tremendous role even during mining work? Since I called you in a hurry, I'll give you double the usual pay. You'll give him? Beru, who suddenly appeared, glared at Assistant Im. Surprised, Assistant Im quickly corrected himself. I, I'll give it to, no, I'll offer it to you. Right, since we have a distinguished guest in this humble place, please maintain that posture. Beru looked at Assistant Im with an expression that seemed to say, otherwise, I will chew your head off. Meanwhile, Suho sneaked a glance at the dungeon they would enter today. Soul Station Field. Dangerous area. Blue fog slowly rose from the subway station entrance. The Soul Station Field had been abandoned for a year due to its deep underground location and complex structure. Seeing that place, Suho suddenly had an idea. The cursed random box promised necessary items, and Vulcan's horn emerged. Was it because he needed two swords that the sword that preys O, and demons ended up in his hand? Or was it because he would soon face the demon? So assistant, so what are we doing here today? Suho asked Assistant Professor Im with a chuckle. Support the original in its official site if you can. You'll do us great service just by not publicizing our links to social medias. It is ridiculous to ask to be low-key when this novel is anything but that. However, every effort counts in the continuation of the translation. You can read ahead by purchasing the advanced chapters, but it is not required to have the full access of the novel, as everything will be unlocked with time. What we lack in speed, we make it up in quality. Chapter 22. Suho, you don't have personal protective gear yet, right? Wear this. In front of Soul Station, Assistant Professor Im handed Suho a thick set of clothes. It turned out to be a one-piece work suit with a top and bottom connected. Here, wear this set of gloves and work shoes too. Thank you. What's there to thank me for? It's only natural that you weren't prepared since I called you suddenly. Learn from this. Protective gear is essential for collectors. Following the explanation of the miners from last season, it's now season two. Assistant Professor Im's lecture on collectors continued. Collectors have a much more dangerous job than miners. Mining was a relatively safe occupation, unless it was a special case like the Korea University field from last time, because all the hunting was done, and you could safely dig at the very back of the dungeon. But collectors are different. The collector's position was right in the middle of the raid and mining team. They had to follow closely behind the raid to collect the corpses of the monsters that the attack squad had hunted. As a result, accidents frequently occurred when they were attacked by the monsters that the raid team had failed to defeat. Of course, there are only one or two at best, so if you're careful when they suddenly appear, the attack squad will come running to save you. So protective gear is for that one or two moments. That's right, but protective gear is more useful when collecting the corpses of monsters. If the monsters have sharp thorns or scales, ordinary clothes will be scratched and ruined while working. Assistant Professor, ah, but there's nothing to be too impressed with compared to what you've done. No, 
This smells like a widower's clothes. I live alone. After a while, the attack hunters arrived on the scene. Suho calmly observed them. There were a total of ten members. Four D-rank magic hunters, five D-rank combat hunters, and one C-rank healer. It seemed that the C-class male healer was the captain of the raid team. But when the raid captain walked towards Suho, he glared at Assistant Professor Im. What's this? Why is the retrieval team so small? Assistant Professor Im awkwardly lowered his head in response. I'm sorry, the collectors all went on strike for some reason, but we have this guy instead today. What? Are you kidding me? You made a contract and you're being so irresponsible. Do you know how much damage we'll suffer if the schedule is delayed? No, no, it won't be delayed. This guy is actually a summoner, so there won't be any problem with the work. What? Are you joking right now? A summoner? The longer Assistant I'm spoke, the more hostile the raid captain's expression became. Then he looked at Suho up and down. Suho stood there, still. Assistant, I'm quickly stepped forward and pushed Suho. Oh, sir, you don't have to worry. This guy will supplement the lack of personnel with his summoned magic beasts. We specially invited him because he's good at his job. At that, the raid captain let out a deep sigh. Is that your answer? You believed in this one person and didn't replenish the staff in the end so you can take their wages. As his voice grew louder, other attack hunters gathered around him. What's going on, captain? What's this? Why is the number of the retrieval team so low? Can they really do the job properly like this? The retrieval team, surrounded by their cold glares, couldn't help but shrink back. In fact, the anger of the attack team was justified. If the number of collectors was low, the work speed slowed down. Then the attacking team that hunted in front of them also had to slow down accordingly. The purpose of hunting itself was to make money from the corpses of magic beasts, and hunting alone without a retrieval team would have been meaningless. Moreover, Soul Station Field had no mana stones, so they had to earn money purely from the corpses of magic beasts. Captain, it's okay, it's okay. Don't these day laborers always act irres, possibly? We can't change today's schedule now, so we just have to go in and do our best. Yes, Captain, let's just go in quickly. Under his subordinate's persuasion, the raid captain finally snapped at Assistant Professor M. Don't fall behind, otherwise I will file a formal complaint to the association. I'll hold you accountable and make sure you never work as a collector again. Yes, yes, we'll work hard, please trust us. As the ten members of the attack team took turns speaking, Assistant Professor Im, standing in the center, lowered his head with a mentally drained expression. He had sinned, so there was no excuse he could make. But he was also unhappy. I'm not even the retrieval team's captain, so why am I? In fact, the real team captain of the retrieval team was one of the collectors who had disappeared. So Assistant Professor Im, the nominal vice team captain, became the criminal in his place, suffering silently. But perhaps due to his skills of flattering his professors, the raid team captain's anger seemed to have subsided a bit. Sk, this is why they are low-level hunters. When the raid captain turned his body with a snort. Arise. Key, what? The hunters looked around in shock at the sound of evil laughter that suddenly hovered in the air. Crook! Black magic beasts suddenly rose from the ground. The evil goblins with black steam all over their bodies giggled and glared at them, and their size was much bigger than an ordinary goblin. Gee, goblin chief? E, even the commander. Why are the magic beasts outside the field? The attack team members quickly drew their weapons. They approached so stealthily. They don't seem ordinary. Everyone, get in battle formation. Captain, fall back. The basic principle of the attack team was to protect the healer. They quickly took their battle stance and fought against the goblins. Or at least, they were about to. Huh? However, the goblins didn't seem to have any intention of fighting. Huh? The black goblins stood with their heads cocked, wondering why the attackers were so angry. The attack team members stood with their weapons in hand, swaying back and forth, as the goblins didn't come charging. Ahem. In between them, Assistant Professor Im cleared his throat and intervened. So, sir, these are the summoned magic beasts I mentioned earlier. Ah. Only then did the members of the attack team understood the situation. The collectors stood on the other side, staring blankly at them as if this had already been discussed. 
In the end, only the attack team made a fuss in surprise. Well, uh, yes, I see. There are a lot of them. One, two, there are seven of them. Yes, twice as many as the missing collectors. Cough, cough. At Assistant Im's words, the attack team members ended up with embarrassed expressions and avoided eye contact. In response to their reaction, Assistant Im gave a secret thumbs up to Suho. Suho smiled back. These seven shadow goblins had been extracted in advance during the daily quest, so there was no need to pick up their cumbersome bodies again. Well, let's go in. As Suho moved, the shadow goblins followed him, hurrying behind him. Suho murmured as he passed the raid party, which was still hesitantly standing, don't fall behind. So they officially entered Soul Station Field. The inside of Soul Station, which had already been eroded, was filled with darkness as electricity had been cut off and the walls and floors were covered with unknown vines and moss. It's slippery, so watch your step. The raid captain, who was walking ahead, gestured to his colleagues, secure the line of sight. Whoosh! Flames rose up from the hands of the magic hunters and circled around them. Thanks to that, the surroundings became brighter and a slightly misty blue view came into sight. At the same time, the identity of the monsters lurking in the darkness was revealed. Shock! They were thorn lizards crawly, neighing on walls and ceilings in all directions. Everyone, battle positions! At the command of the captain, the hunters rushed out and began using their skills. Then the captain, protected at the back as a healer, looked at the collectors. The embarrassment from earlier still lingered on his face. Then the retrieval team. Please proceed with the work carefully while following me. Collecting the corpses of thorn lizards will make some money. They're not demons, Suho thought regretfully, licking his lips. It seemed like there was no other meaning to the cursed random box besides providing him with a sword that was useful for someone who needed a pair of swords. Still, it was worth following Assistant Professor Im and coming here. It's my first time watching other hunters' battles. Suho moved the lizard corpses onto the cart and kept an eye on the battle of the raid with occasional glances. Watching the hunters fight using different abilities and skills in combination was definitely entertaining. So this is how the raid battles work. It'll be helpful. To effectively command the seven or so shadow soldiers, he needed to learn group combat whenever there was an opportunity like this. Until now, he had only used the same type of monsters due to the situation, but he wanted to fight strategically by simultaneously commanding various types of monsters in the future. To do that, he needed to collect the corpses of various kinds of monsters and store them in the Shadow Dungeon. That's why I agreed to be on the retrieval team. That was why Suho had readily accepted Assistant Professor Im's proposal. Collectors were the perfect job to save the corpses of magic beasts. Moreover, from Suho's perspective, being a collector was not at all difficult. Pick them up. Crock. Load them on the cart. The shadow goblins move in perfect order at Suho's words and collect the dead lizards. He only needed to walk leisurely behind them. In the meantime, Beru was sneaking one or two dead lizards into the shadow dungeon. Since there were too many lizards, stealing a few wouldn't raise any suspicion. Swoosh, swoosh. Of course, some lizards also disappeared occasionally as Beru's snacks. However, there was one problem. Suho did too well. The collector's job was just to pick up the corpses of monsters and put them in the cart. However, if the monster was large, it had to be chopped up with a saw or knife first which was the job's hardest and most time-consuming part. It was not an easy task to cut through a monster's tough skin and bones, even with the strength of E-rank hunters. But it was nothing for the shadow soldiers consisting of goblin chiefs and commanders. Croc! Thanks to their efforts, the retrieval team eventually surpassed the hunting speed of the attack team. As a result, the collectors had nothing to do and could only watch the end of the hunt. Wham! Ugh! The sight of Assistant Professor Im yawning from behind made the attack team members' faces redden. They wouldn't have been in such an embarrassing situation if they hadn't told him not to fall behind at first. At that moment, wait, stop the battle. Suddenly, the captain stopped the hunt and walked toward the retrieval team with a stern expression. At the end of it all was Suho. What is it? What kind of trouble is he trying to start again? 
The expression of the collectors became serious at the sudden momentum. Thump. The captain finally arrived in front of Suho. Hey, you. He stared at Suho's face intently and opened his tightly closed mouth. Do you have any intention of signing a contract with our attack squad? Upon hearing those words, Beru nodded his head with a proud expression from behind. As expected, my little king's extraordinary talent shines anytime, anywhere. As a guy with good eyesight, be our exclusive collector. What did that bastard say? You have an innate talent for collecting. Your salary will be at the highest level in the collector's industry. Beru's eye, as flared up with anger, and assistant, I'm barely stopped him from saying he would kill that bastard. Support the original in its official site if you can. You'll do us great service just by not publicizing our links to social medias. It is ridiculous to ask to be low-key when this novel is anything but that. However, every effort counts in the continuation of the translation. You can read ahead by purchasing the advanced chapters, but it is not required to have the full access of the novel, as everything will be unlocked with time. What we lack in speed, we make it up in quality. Chapter 23. Captain. There was an urgent call for the captain from the front. We've found a body. A body? The raid captain, who was talking with Suho, hurriedly returned to the hunters, and when he found the body, his eyes widened. Is it a real body? But this doesn't seem like an ordinary body. The hunter's expressions became serious. The condition of the body was definitely strange. It had burned black like charcoal all over. It was bound to be an unnatural corpse here at Soul Station. I've never heard of a monster that uses fire in Soul Station. That's what I'm saying. Just then, Suho and the collectors came to see the body's condition. Hmm. A suspicion came to Suho's mind. The state of the body was very familiar to him. Then, he turned his head to look at Assistant Professor Im, and Assistant Professor Im also had the same thought and a serious expression. Suho, this body, could it be? Yes, it seems to be Mistburn. Suho nodded confidently. As if his words were heard, the hunters turned their gaze to Suho at the same time. Mistburn? That blue fiery magic beast? Are you sure? Not all hunters knew the types of monsters unless they were a large guild. I'm sure. After experiencing the Korea University incident, Suho had looked up information on Mistburn on the internet, and he had discovered one surprising fact. Mistburn was not a typical magic beast. No, it wasn't even a magic beast to begin with. Suho calmly recited the information he had read then. Mistburn, a phenomenon in which the body self-ignites when a non-awakened person inhales a certain amount of blue mist. What? Mistburn was originally human? Among the inexperienced hunters, some didn't know that fact. This was because even the Hunter Association had only recently revealed the truth about Mistburn. It was well known that Mistburn attacked humans to increase their clones, but there was no way to confirm how the first Mistburn was created. Suddenly, one hunter realized something and muttered, Wait a minute. If Mistburn really comes into existence like that, how did the rumor that you can awaken by drinking the blue mist come about? It's obviously a false rumor, or the information about Mistburn was distorted. You can awaken by inhaling the blue mist. This rumor had been circulating on the internet like an urban legend for over a year, but no one had yet come forward to uncover the truth behind that rumor. Everyone who inhaled it as an experiment would have burned to death. Anyway, that wasn't the important thing right now. What about this corpse? How did it get down here in the first place? That was what the hunters were curious about. They were currently on the fourth basement level of Soul Station. It didn't make sense that a single non-awakened being had managed to make its way through the lizards to get down here. But it was also strange to think that someone had turned into Mistburn on the first floor and walked all the way down here. If they had gone outside to burn the living people, they would have had no reason to come down to this place where only monsters were lurking. Captain, we found another one over here. Then a new body was discovered not far away. The condition of the body was the same as the first one. It was a remnant of charred mist burn. There's one over here, too. Afterward, the hunters were able to discover several more corpses. The expression on the captain's face became increasingly serious as more bodies were found. Something's not right. 
As someone responsible for the hunter's safety, it was difficult to ignore such a strange phenomenon. But it was also too risky to stop the hunt just because of this. They had only discovered a few bodies so far, and with this many people gathered together, they could easily handle dozens of mistburn if they appeared. For now, let's keep hunting. And so the hunt resumed. Suho. Assistant Im approached Suho with an uneasy expression. I'm going to tell you something beforehand this tea, me. What is it? Let's run away first if it seems dangerous. Huh, what kind of honest cowardice is this? With an expression of disbelief, Soho and Beru both looked at Assistant Im. But Assistant Im was truly sincere. You know I have running skills, right? If anything happens, you use your summons to run away. I will run away on my own. Even while speaking, Assistant Im kept looking around anxiously. Suho asked him, looking at his face, Assistant Im, are you certain that something is going to happen? I mean, of course it would be better if nothing happens, but... Finally, with a deep sigh, Assistant Im revealed his true feelings. The truth is, my mother was killed by Mistburn, and she herself became a Mistburn and tried to kill me. That's why I'm terrified of them. I feel like my mother is trying to kill me again. Suho couldn't say anything in response to his rambling. Around that time, a gruesome scream burst out from deep inside Soul Station. It's hot! Hot! Ah! 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 Swish! People were writhing in agony while being bound by chains. Their bodies were wrapped in blue flames. Please save me. Please, I'll say I didn't see anything. I really didn't see anything. Behind them, there were still people who had not yet been burned, sobbing and begging for their lives. Pure terror, madness, it was impossible to understand. Why did this have to happen to them? Why did they have to suffer like this? But there was no one to answer their questions. Of course, there was no reason for this to happen in the first place. They were just unlucky. And for that reason alone, they were being burned alive. Is it that hot? There were people calmly watching their screams. Hmm, it should be hotter. The firepower is not enough. It was a group of people wearing black robes. Their faces were covered with crow masks, like something out of a medieval movie. Hey, how can we increase the firepower? We're running low on fuel. Sk, fuel is always the problem. Why can't we get it? Since all the hyenas were caught this time. Huh, why does this always happen? The crow mask people grumbled carefreely. Meanwhile, the screams that seemed to go on forever suddenly stopped, and in its place something was bound. Gua! Mistburn. The blue smoke magic beasts were roaring ferociously, burning with the black corpse as its wick. Oh, yeah, nice to see you too. The crow mask people casually waved their hands and skillfully put on thick gloves on both hands. Well, let's get started then, before the firewood goes out. What should we do with everything we've used? The crow mask person in the corner raised a hand and asked. Next to them lay the remains of several mist burn that had cooled off. Oh, right, we will be doing the work ourselves, so dispose of it far away and come back here. Yes, understood. You know not to dispose of it nearby, right? Of course, don't worry. The crow masked person packed the remains of mist burn one by one into a cart, and while pulling the cart they grumbled, Ugh, so annoying. Where should I dispose of it this time? I'd like to just pile it up near the factory if I could. It'll be a problem if someone finds our location. Dispose of it as far away as possible. Got it. The crow mask person shrugged once and disappeared into the darkness with the cart. Other crow mask people who had been watching their back clicked their tongues, seeming to disapprove. He's always pulling shit like that. He may talk like that, but he's good at his job. Come on, let's start. Yes, we'll begin the 13th Stardust operation. At that moment, the eyes of the crow mask people became more cautious than ever, and behind them, the eyes of the people bound in chains were full of desperation. Please, please save us. Anyone, please save us. They begged and begged, but their voices did not reach the sky. Beru's antennae pricked up, then he turned to stare into the dark arcness of the dark subway tunnel. Little King, I felt it too. Suho was also looking in the direction Beru was looking with narrowed eyes. Is it because my sense stat has increased? Information. Sense. Increases sensory perception. Increases crisis detection ability. The darkness extended along the subway tracks. A faint, ominous energy could be felt somewhere in that deep tunnel. 
It gives me goosebumps. He could tell without looking. There was undoubtedly something powerful lurking at that end. The first thing that came to mind was the existence of a boss. However, the Soul Station field was a dungeon that had already been around for a year. That meant the lucrative magic beasts, like boss mobs, had already been taken by other hunters. As a result, the only magic beasts left here were lizards with high numbers and excellent fertility. If it's not the boss, what could this energy be? Suho looked at the raid hunters who were hunting the lizards. Is it possible that no one except me has noticed this blatant malice? And that malice was glaring at them from the darkness like an eagle watching its prey from high in the sky. Its target was the raid hunters who were making noise in the area. Then, the fuel came to me on its own. Suddenly, a voice muttered in the dark. Whack! At that moment, Suho and Beru opened their eyes and shouted simultaneously, Take cover! Enemies! Bang! At that moment, an explosion occurred, and something in a black robe appeared there. It was an unidentified man wearing a crow mask, but no one thought of him as a human because the abnormally swollen arm of a monster protruded from the black robe. It's a humanoid magic beast. At the cry of the captain, the hunters quickly reorganized their formation. Oh, you dodged that? The crow-masked man slowly rose and pulled out the fist stuck in the tunnel floor. Not bad. Whack. Cement fragments shattered from his bizarre-looking hand. And swish! In an instant, the man's figure disappeared from everyone's sight. The stunned hunters frantically searched for him, but it was too late. Starting with the troublesome healer. Splat! The man's massive fist suddenly appeared behind and aimed at the captain's unprotected back. The captain, who realized it a step too late, widened his eyes in shock. And flash! In an instant, the eyes behind the crow mask widened in surprise as someone suddenly jumped before him and blocked the attack. Whoosh! Black blood gushed out like a fountain. Huh! Soho, who had blocked the attack with Vulcan's horn, was glaring at him from under the fountain of blood. Oh, look at this. The corner of the crow-masked man's mouth twisted into a wicked grin. Support the original in its, of its official site if you can. You'll do us great service just by not publicizing our links to social medias. It is ridiculous to ask to be low-key when this novel is anything but that. However, every effort counts in the continuation of the translation. You can read ahead by purchasing the advanced chapters, but it is not required to have the full access of the novel as everything will be unlocked with time. What we lack in speed, we make it up in quality. Chapter 24 Suho instantly pulled out two swords from his inventory and blocked the attacker's strike. The eyes behind the crow-masked man and Suho's met mid-air for a brief moment. What incredible strength! Is this even possible? Suho's current strength stat was 39. Since he had distributed his skill points mainly towards strength stat, he was more confident in his strength than his other stats. But the crow-masked man's power was just as strong with one arm. Swish! As if they had made an unspoken agreement, the two simultaneously backed away and sprang toward each other at an even faster speed. Flash! Clang! Suho's dual sword swung with tremendous momentum. The crow-masked man's massive arms swatted the attacks away, causing the wall and floor to explode. All of this happened in just two seconds. Ugh! Thanks to Suho, the raid captain who managed to escape the crisis immediately backed away. What happened? How could that summoner? Although momentarily distracted by Suho's tremendous combat power, the captain did not forget his duty. The most important ability as a captain was the ability to assess the level of magic beasts. In other words, it was the ability to detect danger. It's a D-rank beast, all-out attack. He quickly assessed the crow Mask man's magic power level and shouted to everyone, D-rank? The hunters quickly regained their senses and assumed attack positions at his words. Then there's no problem. Kill him. Thunk. Thunk. The hunter's skills were concentrated and fired at the crow Mask man fighting Suho. However, the crow Mask man easily dodged all the attacks and jumped back. D-rank? He smirked clinging to the tunnel wall like a spider. You're making such a meaningless assessment in front of people. Then he put his other hand, not the massive one, into his robe. Swoosh. A small potion came out of his bosom. What is that? Assistant Professor Aim was the first to identify that blue liquid sparkling with brilliant starlight. 
Stardust. It's stardust. Stop him from drinking it. The hunter's eyes widened at Assistant Professor Im's urgent shout. Stardust? That power-enhancing drug? A rumor had been spreading among hunters that there was a power-enhancing drug called stardust. According to the rumor, it was a drug that, when ingested, increased one's mana for about a week without any side effects. Of course, it was expensive, but the price wasn't a problem considering the amount of money that could be earned by going into higher-level dungeons and hunting with the amplified mana. As a result, Stardust was always in short supply. Even if someone wanted to buy it, they couldn't. Correct. The crow-masked man chuckled and drank the potion from under his mask. Stop him. Gulp. When the hunters rushed at him, it was already too late. Sizzle. After swallowing Stardust, his body began to swell rapidly as if balancing his already enlarged arm. Grah! He roared ferociously and bounced off the wall. Bang! Following that, two huge arms swept the hunters' bodies instantly. Ack! The hunters were thrown in all directions like bowling pins. Nonsense. The captain's pupils shook uncontrollably at that sight. Judging the crow mask man as D-rank was a mistake. He became a C-rank magic beast. It was totally unexpected. Who would have thought that Stardust was such a powerful mana amplification potion? Everyone, run! We can't handle him alone. Oh well, you won't know until you try. Beru, who had come to the raid captain's side, smiled wickedly. My little king has now been activated. There was no need to ask whom Beru was referring to. Suho and the Shadow Soldiers were already hunting down the enemy. Shadow Goblin, use your skills! Currently, the seven Shadow Soldiers led by Suho consisted of five Goblin Chiefs and two Goblin Commanders. And as the leaders who led the Ordinary Goblins each had their own skills, Shadow Goblin uses skill Ice Arrow. Shh, an Ice Arrow flew and froze the legs of the Crow-Masked Man. Jack! At that moment, the tremendous power and size of the enemy that had been pressuring Suho temporarily came to a halt. A wicked red aura settled into the man's body. Shadow Goblin uses skill, Curse of Blood. The target will receive 15% more physical damage for one minute. The eyes of the crow-masked man widened suddenly as he was cursed with decreased mobility and increased damage. Croc! The Shadow Goblins rushed at him with their butchering daggers and saws, striking it mercilessly. Ha! Such petty tricks! Clang! The crow-masked man shook off his frozen legs and tore the shadow goblins to shreds. But the shadow goblins laughed even more wickedly, and their bodies, which had been cut in half, were reattached on the spot. Then, with bizarre movements, they relentlessly plunged their daggers into the massive crow-masked man's body, causing irreparable damage. Ugh! What is this? For the first time, confusion crossed the man's face. The weapons held by the seven goblins were nothing more than a kitchen knife, and saw used to dismantle carcasses. Even with the curse that amplifies damage by 15%, it could not deal significant damage. However, when the madness of the infinitely regenerating goblins was added, the synergy was by no means negligible. Kick! Puck! 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 Cock! Puck! 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 Chwak! Chuck! Chuck! These leeches! The crow-masked man, covered in black blood, in an instant, continued to tear and beat the creatures clinging to his body in anger. But the goblins tenaciously regenerated. What on earth is that? The hunters who watched the dreadful and gruesome battle were pale. How could a summoner? The skill of summoner they were familiar with was not like that. At most, they might summon a few sleep-inducing or exploding bugs. Of course, some hunters used useful summons occasionally, but they were never magic beasts that could endlessly regenerate and annoy their opponents like that. Unfortunately, Suho's mana was not infinite. Mana is consumed when I regenerate a shadow soldier. The more Tai delay, the more I'll lose. Slash. Rakan's fang and Vulcan's horn cut through the magic beast's massive body again and again. Chuck, 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 chuck. It went faster and faster. Effect deadly strike. Has a 15% chance to deal more than double damage. The skill of Rakan's fang shone. Kra, you bastard! The crow-masked man was furious and glared at Suho, the mastermind behind all this. And snap! Ignoring the attacks of the petty goblins, he gripped Suho's sword with his massive hands. Ha! Finally caught you, you bastard! Blood burst from his hand as he gripped the sword, but he didn't mind. 
he grinned wickedly and hit Suho's side with his other hand. Puck, it was loud, like a drum being struck. However, skill, resilience reduces damage. Suho just glared at him provocatively. Give it your best shot. Skill, passive skill, no mana required. You possess indomitable resilience. Physical defense is increased by 40%. This bastard. Bang, he lifted Suho's body with his sword and slammed him onto the ground. Cough! The impact made Suho vomit blood and drop the sword. Oh no. Suho. His ears rang. The voice of Assistant Professor M felt far away. Sk, even a mere summoner is so cocky. He heard the voice of the crow-masked figure mocking himself. Now, let me use this sword. He seemed to like the sword that had covered him in blood during the fight against Suho, but Suho felt the same way. What are you? Huh? At that moment, Suho's mouth twitched up from where he lay on the ground. Who dares covet the sword of the beast monarch? Shwack! Suddenly, the red blood vessels on the crow-masked figure's arm, holding Rakan's fang, swelled as if they were about to burst. What is this? He panicked as Rakan's fang clung to his hand and began to corrode he, his body. You dare to take me? Offer your soul and body to me and die. This crazy sword. The crow-masked man gathered his strength to prevent corrosion. Then the suppressed energy deep within him pushed back against the energy of Rakan's fang. Ho? What's this? You had a spirit? Rakan's fang laughed as if it found it amusing. You bastard, you were already possessed by a demon. Krah! The crow-masked man roared like a beast and barely managed to shake Rakan's fang from his hand. But at that moment, swoosh, Suho had approached and pierced his heart with Vulcan's horn. Cough. The man gasped for breath with bulging eyes. Checkmate. Suho split his body in two, using Vulcan's horn. Squawk. Black blood sprinkled like rain. Thump. The crow's mask fell off the man's face as he tumbled across the floor. Then, from within it, a grotesquely distorted face appeared that could not be called human. Grrr. He breathed his last breath and bared his teeth to Suho. Don't be too happy just because you killed one. What? Sooner or later, you will all die anyway. He left a curse-like will, just like House Radiru had perished. Then the light in his eyes vanished. At that moment, Shwalkin's horn devours the demon's soul. Vulcan's horn absorbed the evil energy from the man's body. Devoured demon soul. Effect destructive urge. Increases physical damage by 31% demon. Suho's eyes flashed with realization. As expected, the reason why the cursed random box gave Vulcan's horn was because of this. Level up. Flash. Suho's whole body was enveloped in a soft blue light and all his wounds were completely healed. Suho recalled what the man had last said. House Radiru? What does that mean? Beru approached Suho, whose head was tilted in confusion. Do you know what that means? Yes, House Radiru is a demon noble family. Of course, they had been the weakest among the top 20 demon noble families, but... Beru glared at the corpse of the lower demon with narrow eyes. They became the top in the hierarchy because my liege wiped out the first to 19th ranks long ago. Support the original in its official site if you can. You'll do us great service just by not publicizing our links to social medias. It is ridiculous to ask to be low-key when this novel is anything but that. However, every effort counts in the continuation of the translation. You can read ahead by purchasing the advanced chapters, but it is not required to have the full access of the novel as everything will be unlocked with time. What we lack in speed we make it up in quality. Chapter 25 Baru recalled an old memory. The demon world had been destroyed twice by the Shadow Monarch, Sung Jinwu. The first time was in the Demon Castle dungeon, and the second time was after everything had been reset. In the war between Sung Jinwu and the Monarchs, demons were nothing more than experience points for Sung Jinwu to gain. So the demons died over and over again. Ultimately, only one family could survive in the demon world, the rank 20 family, Radiru, the only demons to side with Sung Jinwu. Had that family been destroyed? It seems that something has happened to the demon world in the meantime. Beru narrowed his eyes and looked at the dead body of a low-level demon. In order to know the inside story, gluttony was the best method because it allowed him to read the memories of the consumed being. Little King, can I eat that demon? Suho's gaze turned to the demon's corpse. It's impossible to extract a shadow from a target with polluted mana. 
Suho tilted his head at the message floating before him. So demons cannot be extracted as shadow soldiers? That is correct. Apparently, since the shadow ability extracts the opponent's soul, extracting the demon's already corrupted soul seemed impossible. Suho nodded. Then go ahead and devour it. As permission was granted, Beru's mouth opened wide and he tore into the demon's corpse. He wanted to swallow it in one gulp, but chomp, 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 chomp. It seemed like it would take a little longer since his mouth was too small. Putting aside the slightly gruesome scene that might need mosaic processing, Suho turned to the gazes that had been focused on him since earlier. Since some time ago, the hunters of both retrieval and attack teams had been looking at him with astonished expressions. Um, how? In this confusing situation where nobody knew what to say first, Assistant Professor Im, who had seen this side of Suho before, stepped forward. Suho, are you okay? Are your wounds healed? Although all his wounds had been healed with the level up, the blood on his body hadn't disappeared. Suho looked like he was about to collapse from being covered in blood. Ah, yes. Suho casually wiped the blood off his face with the back of his hand at Assistant Im's concern. Um, excuse me. The raid captain approached him hesitantly. Maybe you should go to the association and get reevaluated. Aside from his summoning skills, there was no way Suho, who had hunted a C-rank demon alone, could be ranked as E-rank. There was definitely some kind of mistake. That's not important right now. At that moment, Assistant Im picked up the empty potion bottle the demon had eaten earlier and looked closely at it. The effect of Stardust isn't usually this strong. What the hell is this? Do you know about Stardust? The expression on the captain's face became serious. He himself had felt something was off since earlier. Assistant Im nodded. Well, many low-ranked hunters use it, so of course. Just a few days ago, the collectors who went missing claimed to have obtained Stardust and were overjoyed. Stardust was mostly favored by low-ranked hunters rather than high-ranked ones. Why did low-ranked hunters use more Stardust? Because there were limits to the amplification effect of Stardust. Stardust was an amazing drug that could instantly turn an E-rank hunter into a D-rank hunter. However, it couldn't inflate a D-rank to a C-rank as easily. Of course, it was still possible for D-rank hunters with only a slightly lower amount of mana than C-rank hunters to actually become C-ranks. And those kinds of people were the main customers of Stardust. They took Stardust before visiting the association, not the dungeon. There, they would get their mana re-evaluated and their rank adjusted to C-rank. So, some users who became greedy for Stardust tried to increase its amplification effect by taking multiple doses at once or taking it continuously. They all ended up failing and just wasting the mar, ear money. Moreover, there were rumors that developers were still researching ways to increase that amplification effect. However, no one knew who was actually developing Stardust. So how did it happen just now? At that moment, Beru burped loudly from the side and stood up. Then, he muttered as he went through the puzzles of memories that came into his mind. Well, of course, Stardust was originally created by demons, so it's only natural that it would be more effective for them. What? Demons made Stardust? The hunters were shocked by the shocking truth. Is that true? Yes, it is. In response to Suho's question, Beru nodded solemnly. But that's not the problem. Even Beru couldn't read all the memories of his prey but those fragmentary pieces of information were shocking enough. Apparently, the ingredients for Stardust are... Beru's subsequent explanation was truly shocking and terrifying. This was how Stardust was made. 1. Making firewood, catch non-awakened beings and inject blue mist to turn them into mistburn. 2. Increase firepower, throw humans to mistburn as fuel to maximize their firepower. 3. Roasting, roast the mana stones soaked in demon's blood over the blazing firewood. The resulting charcoal was then ground into powder, which was stardust. And the solution is diluted by melting it in water and packaged in these potion bottles for distribution? Yes. After hearing Beru's explanation, the hunters trembled. This is unbelievable. You're saying stardust was made by burning humans alive? Then why is this demon here? They probably already knew the answer to that. Beru stared into the tunnel where the demon had first appeared. I think if we follow that path, we'll find the demon's factory, 
where they capture civilians to make sacrifices. At that moment, ding, quest, rescue the survivors. There are people nearby waiting for your rescue. Please rescue as many of them as possible. The reward will vary depending on the number of people you rescue. Current number of survivors, seven. Current number of people rescued, zero. There are still seven people alive? Since the quest had appeared, there was no longer reason to delay. Suho's eyes gleamed. I'm going to rescue them. Thump. The moment Suho stepped toward the tunnel. Just a moment. Suho. Assistant urgently grabbed Suho's shoulder from behind. Suho turned his head and looked at him. Assistant Im, you should run first. No, I want to go too this time. Hmm? What's with this coward? Assistant Professor Im opened his mouth with determination, though his lips trembled with fear. With my skill I can carry at least one person on my back. There would be many more demons in the place Suho was going than before. It was clear that he would need more hands to rescue the people captured there. Shrug. Carry them. That's a good idea. Suho picked up the crow mask lying on the ground and turned to look at the hunters who were staring at him. Let's plan the operation. At the long railway at Seoul Station, there was a huge air defense shelter prepared for war or disaster. The Demon's Factory was located here, a place usually used as a construction site. Why is the youngest one so late? The demons in the factory started to worry as the youngest member who went to dump garbage didn't return. Maybe he encountered a wild magic beast on the way. Who knows? Just some lizards. And then, as the iron door opened, the youngest member, wearing a crow mask, walked in, pulling a cart with a group of humans randomly stuffed inside. The demons were intrigued. Wow, what's this? Where did you get these firewood? They just came across me. The youngest member stopped the cart in the corner of the factory, shaking it violently, rattle. But the hunters, covered in blood, did not even groan, let alone move. The demons asked, you didn't kill them, did you? Killing reduces the effect. They must still be breathing. Ah, I see. Our youngest member is Goo, D at this. As they had just gotten new firewood, the demons conversed about how lucky they were and the true identity of the youngest member who stood in front of the cart and watched their conversation was none other than Suho. He covered his face with the mask of the demon he had killed and entered this place voluntarily. And now, those who pretended to be dead and piled up in layers were the raid hunters. They were able to attempt such a daring infiltration because they had roughly figured out the situation in the factory from the memories of the youngest from Baru. Demons identify each other's identities with crow masks. They don't care about details like appearance or voice. This was possible because the demons in the factory were not currently in their true bodies. Souls of demons wandering through dimensional rifts took over human bodies and stole their flesh. According to Beru, even monarchs had once hidden on Earth by possessing human bodies. They would have had to create a huge hole in the Earth to enter directly with their main body, which possessed immense power. It would have been much more troublesome. The demons were disgusted with the weak human bodies they had taken over and were ashamed to show themselves to one another, so they usually concealed themselves tightly with black robes and masks. Moreover, demons did not rely on visual or auditory information, but on the magical energy they sensed from one another to identify their identities. Hmm? Youngest, you. One of the demons tilted his head, feeling Suho's energy. Suho swallowed dryly. Yes? What's with that sword? It looks good. On Suho's back was Vulcan's horn, which had devoured the soul of the youngest demon. The demons instinctively approached Suho, noticing that the material of the black sword was exceptional. That sword, at that moment. Well, enough chit-chat. The one who emanated the most powerful aura among the demons clapped his hands to get everyone's attention. Get ready, the gate is about to open. What? Suho's eyes widened as he looked in the direction the demon had pointed. Even the hunters pretending to be dead on the wagon had to steal a glance with their eyes wide open. Crackle, crackle. The space with nothing began to tear apart with a red aura. This is insane. It's unclear whether the youngest demon didn't remember because of memory loss or simply because they weren't aware of what was happening. Goodness. They realized what the demons had been doing in this factory all this time at that moment. The last ingredient for stardust. Mana stones soaked in demon blood. 
Since the demons here currently possessed human bodies, they had been summoning a demon to extract the blood directly within this place. Crackle! Crackle! At this moment, a dimensional hole connecting the demon world and the earth was created within the ominous red gate. These guys are truly insane. Everyone, get ready for combat. We don't know who's coming out, but we have to kill them in one breath. Quo, seeing the red light raging out of the red gate, the demons took up their battle positions. And finally, an unidentified demon that had been wandering the demon world was summoned before them. Thump. The figure's purple hair fluttered, and they had slender arms and legs. A woman? As the red gate closed, the female demon in front of it looked pitiful. She was covered in blood and looked like she could collapse at any moment, but her eyes shone brightly in the midst of flowing blood. Who summoned me? The purple demon looked around at the other demons with a haughty gaze and raised the corners of her mouth in response to their clear hostility. Heh! Are you also after my life? With a swish, she brandished the spear she held toward the demons. Fine, come at me. I am Esil, the eldest daughter of House Radiru. We will fight to the end until the moment I die. Support the original in its official site if you can. You'll do us great service just by not publicizing our links to social media. S. It is ridiculous to ask to be low-key when this novel is anything but that. However, every effort counts in the continuation of the translation. You can read ahead by purchasing the advanced chapters, but it is not required to have the full access of the novel, as everything will be unlocked with time. What we lack in speed, we make it up in quality. Chapter 26 Greed filled the eyes of the demons at those words. Radiru? House Radiru? The corners of the demons' mouths stretched wide, and their eyes gleamed with madness. Could it be that there are still demons living in Radiru? Kahaha! This time we'll wipe them out for good. The blood of demon nobles was rare and valuable, especially in a world where all noble clans had been wiped out and only mixed breeds remained. Don't give her an opening. The demons attacked Essil, the demon of House Radaru. Their bodies grew explosively, and their wicked magic extended from their elongated claws, aiming at Esil's life. Inferior demons dare to challenge me. Esil easily dodged all their attacks and fiercely swung her spear but the lower demons continued to attack her relentlessly. Ha ha! The world has changed too much for us to share the same status. The day we hunt demon nobles has come. Ugh! Cornered, Esil gnashed her teeth in anger. Due to being chased by countless demons in the demon world for a long time, her stamina had been depleted for a long time. In addition, she was forcibly summoned to Earth in her original state, which further limited her strength. The way to get rid of that restriction was possession, as these low-level demons did. They possessed humans, stole their bodies, and developed stardust to amplify their powers. The battle between weakened demon noble and amplified low-level demons had an obvious outcome. Ha ha! It's pure blood, pure blood. We can make stardust with pure blood. Beru suddenly whispered into Suho's ear. Suho slipped behind during the battle. Yes, it's time. Suho nodded and exchanged glances with the hunters on the cart. The hunters also nodded and secretly rose. Unexpected things happened, but it's actually working out well. Their initial plan was this. 1. Infiltration. Suho sneaks into the factory disguised as the youngest demon, wearing a crow mask and a black robe. 2. Disturbance. Suho causes a disturbance inside, diverting the demon's attention to himself. 3. Escape. Meanwhile, hunters disguised in bloodied clothing rescue the captured people from the factory and escape. However, this incident occurred before Suho could cause the disturbance as planned. We move as planned. All the hunters on the cart, including assistant professor Im, possessed speed-related skills. Swoosh. Suho and the hunters disappeared from the spot simultaneously. Then, they instantly arrived at the people tied up in a corner, shushing them. Shh! After quickly exchanging glances with them, the people understood their intentions and nodded in fear. Crack! Suho ripped off the chains that bound them with his strength. All right! Assistant Im's heart raced, wanting to run away right away. Now all we have to do is carry and run. The moment he carried one civilian on his back. Huh! One of the lower demons fighting with Essiel of House Radiru noticed the scene. What are you doing there instead of fighting, youngest one? 
a light of doubt flashed in the demon's eyes through the crow's mask. Instead of answering, Suho shouted, Run! Swoosh! Just then, the hunters, with all the civilians on their shoulders, dashed out at full speed. Their target was the entrance. Where are you going? At that moment, several demons who were fighting with Isil quickly blocked their path. Crack! Evil magic rushed towards the hunters. Then, Suho shouted from behind, Don't stop and keep running! At those words, the hunters accelerated with a determined look. The closer the demons' attacks, the faster they ran. We have faith in you! They kept running, believing in Suho, and Suho did not betray their trust. Arise! In an instant, thud, 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 the arms of the shadow goblins that Suho had planted near the entrance rose from the ground and began to grab and trip the demon's legs. What? The demons were shocked, but they had no time to be surprised. Shadow goblins were vicious. They mercilessly cut the demon's ankles with the butchering knives they were holding. Wog! The bodies of the humans possessed by the demons are truly weak. Even a small wound on their Achilles tendon renders them powerless. When the demons screamed and crouched down in pain, the hunters seized the opportunity and quickly passed by them, finally succeeding in escaping outside the factory. As he was the last to step out of the iron gate, Assistant Professor Im turned his head and looked back at Suho, who stayed behind. Are you really going to be okay? Suho, who understood his unspoken words just by looking at him, smiled and nodded. Then, with a clang, the iron gate closed. It took them only three seconds to escape. It took the demons two seconds to recover and kill the shadow goblins that were summoned a while ago. In total, it took them five seconds. Everything went smoothly according to the plan. All that's left is... My turn, Suho thought as he quickly counted the number of demons. Nine demons were left except for the purple-haired demon summoned a little while ago. The problem was that each of these demons was on par with the youngest one he had barely defeated earlier. However, let's do this. Suho's gaze fell on his shadow and, arise. He called out the shadow soldier he had extracted in advance before infiltrating this place. Brokey. At that moment, a massive shadow soared up before Suho. <laughs> Night rank. It was a gigantic hyena magic beast whose whole body was enveloped in black steam and boils. This creature was Suho's initial plan for disturbance. Although the order had been reversed, hunting down the demons was an even better situation. Brokey's fierce roar shook the factory with deadly intent. What's this? The demons, who were launching a fierce attack to hunt Essil, were greatly surprised. Why is Brokey here? Wait, something's different. The demons already knew Brokey, who led the Hyena Guild from behind, because the Hyena Guild was a representative trading partner that had been delivering human materials, a key ingredient for demon powder, to them all along. The situation had improved significantly as a result, but there was still a problem. Based on Suho's experience fighting both Brokey and the demons, it was clear that Brokey was stronger than the demons in front of him one-on-one. -on -one. However, the demons numbered nine they had no chance of winning as things stood. But how about this? Baru! At Suho's shout, devilish energy spread out in all directions from Baru's small body. Baru uses skill, cruel command. Skill, cruel command increases Brokey's stats by 50%. As a side effect of skill, cruel command, Brokey is cursed with madness. Rawr! Brokey attacked the demons without hesitation. Bang! What the heck? Brokey's giant front paw ruthlessly threw off the demons, swinging like a baseball bat. And then Suho's dual swords whirled toward the guys slammed into the concrete wall. Storm slash! Storm slash! Whoosh! Suho's body swirled like a hurricane, sweeping the guys away. You have defeated Lesser Demon. You have defeated Lesser. Huff! Huff! Thanks to the interruption, Essiel could catch her breath after a fierce battle. However, Instead of feeling relieved, she was taken aback by the sight of Brokey, who was still raging on with even more fierceness. That magic beast? Could it be? Ah! Thump, thump, thump! A black beast that plowed through the demons with the bulk of a tank. Essel knew of only one summoner who could summon a creature that looked like that in this world. The one who had destroyed the demon world alone a long time ago. The one who had annihilated all the demons who stood in his way and eventually even brought down the demon king, Baron. 
the name that was both fearsome and great. Is Sung Jinwoo here? Isil's face, which had been filled with a sense of desperation, suddenly brightened. She Fran, tightly looked around for Sung Jinwoo's figure. Where? Where are you, Sir Jin? And eventually she found someone. Wu. But it wasn't Sung Jinwoo. It was a face that looked very similar to Sung Jinwoo from his childhood. Huh? Essel cocked her head. At that moment, long time no see. Beru appeared before Essel with a swish. Who? Could it be Beru? Essel was surprised by Beru's changed appearance, which she hadn't seen in a long time. Why are you so small? The Beru she remembered was a demon more terrible than the devil who slaughtered enemies at the forefront next to Sung Jinwoo. But for some reason, Beru's current form had changed into a cute figure the size of a fist. On the other hand, Beru was equally curious. You seem to have weakened considerably. What happened? Hey, I've had a bit of a hard time. Ezel giggled and whimpered, even as blood flowed from her wounds. Beru snickered at the pathetic sight. Your carefree personality despite dying hasn't changed. Well, I haven't died yet, have I? Oh ho ho. What the heck happened to the demon world in the meantime? Shrug. Before Beru finished speaking, Essel collapsed on the spot. All of the tension in her body had been released the moment she saw Beru. Essel whimpered while lying flat on the ground and called out to Beru. Beru, I feel like I'm really going to die. Can you please heal me? No. Why? It's a waste of mana. Ezel realized that Beru had also become weaker from his outright refusal. I see. You've become weaker too? Keek, I have not. Beru became angry and yelled, even as Suho's battle continued, you have defeated Lesser Demon. You have defeated Lesser Demon. Vulcan's horn devours the demon's soul. Vulcan's horn devours the demon's soul. The situation was already completely tilted towards Suho. Cruel Command, which increased Broki's stats by a whopping 50%, had a much higher amplification rate than Stardust. In addition, the more the demons were killed, the stronger Suho became. Devoured Demon Soul Effect Destructive Urge increases physical damage by 33%. Effect Destructive Urge increases physical damage by 4 Level up. Wag Thump. When Suho's sword decapitated the last the last demon, Suho's level also reached exactly 20. Then, ding! You have reached level 20, you can now use shop, purchase option. Huh? Suho, who received the message, blinked. There's a shop system too? Support the original in its official site if you can. You'll do us great service just by not publicizing our links to social medias. It is ridiculous to ask to be low-key when this novel is anything but that. However, every effort counts in the continuation of the translation. You can read ahead by purchasing the advanced chapters, but it is not required to have the full access of the novel, as everything will be unlocked with time. What we lack in speed, we make it up in quality. Chapter 27 Ding! Just in time, the quest was also completed. You have completed quest, rescue the survivors. Number of rescued survivors. They made it out of the dungeon safely. Suho nodded, thinking of the hunters who had carried the survivors out. They had promised to escape from the dungeon as quickly as possible without being caught by the magic beasts, so now Suho only had to escape alone. But before that, the quest completion reward has arrived. Do you want to check the reward? Check. Ding. The following rewards are prepared. Reward 1. Ability points plus 3. Reward 2. One random box. Random box? A thought popped up in Suho's mind. Was it an ordinary random box without the label cursed? He had no idea what could be inside. Suho accepted all of the rewards. He invested all the ability points in his strength stat and shortly after a small random box appeared in his hand. I wonder what's inside. When he ripped open the packaging, to his surprise, several sparkling golden coins were inside. Cha-ching. You have obtained 700 gold. Gold coins? Did they give him 700 gold for rescuing seven survivors? It was extremely cunning that he received gold that could be used in the store as soon as the store function was activated. It's not a coincidence, obviously. Suho was starting to realize it too. He felt the goodwill toward him in the level-up system inherited from his father. Thank you for the allowance, father. The received gold coins all went into the inventory. Then, a notation of 700 gold appeared at the bottom of the inventory. Open the shop. A new shop window opened before Suho. Spy Cell. 
The shop window was extremely simple. Just as Suho was about to check the purchase list to see what items he could buy, Beru suddenly appeared and asked, What will you do with that demon? Suho's gaze turned to the female demon lying dying on the ground. Come to think of it, there's that too. The enemy of an enemy is a friend. He had fought fiercely with the lesser demons until a while ago, so he hadn't killed her, but now was the time to make a choice. Before that, there was something to confirm. By the way, I saw you two talking a while ago. Do you know each other? Yes, that's right. House Radiru was the only family not to attack my liege when he subjugated the demon world. House Radiru were demons who admitted their weakness and volunteered to become slaves to Sung Jinwu. However, if Sung Jinwu had not been capricious, their surrender would never have been accepted. Most of the demons who had faced Sung Jinwu in the Monarch's War had died. Or, like the lesser demons they encountered today, only the cowards who ran away from the battlefield early and hid out of Sung Jinwu's sight were still alive. And my liege had forcibly captured that demon named Esil and used her as a guide. Excuse me. At that moment, Esil, who had fallen to the ground and was bleeding profusely, called out to Suho in a dying voice. I'm sorry to interrupt the conversation, but can you save me first? I really feel like I'm going to die. At that moment, rumble, a booming sound echoed from Esil's belly. Huh? As Suho and Beru's gaze focused on her, Esil awkwardly held her rumbling stomach. After being chased around for a few years, I've been starving. Ah, it seemed that she was saying she was starving to death, not that she was actually dying. To cut to the chase, Suho eventually saved Esil. There were several reasons for this, one of which was to test the effect of the potion he bought at the shop. Item, acquisition difficulty, E, type, consumable, a potion that can restore health. When consumed, HP slowly recovers by 500. It can be stored in your inventory, but it cannot be transferred to others. Can't be transferred to others? Then is it possible to feed it directly? Suho approached Asil and poured the potion into her mouth. Ah! Esil's wounds began to heal as she drank the pot, Ion. What, are you a healer? By the way, What's your relationship with Sir Jinwu? But Suho ignored Essil's gaze, which was staring at him as if she could see through his face and focused only on the performance of the potion. Hmm, the healing speed is a bit slow. It will be difficult to use it in an emergency during combat. Leveling up is still the best. After a while, Essil's condition improved enough to move around, but the growl in her stomach was still loud. I'm still weak from hunger. You fought well earlier. And that was the second reason why Suho saved Esil. The energy he felt from Esil wasn't that great, meaning she was relatively weak. Even though Esil had recovered after drinking the potion, the energy he felt from her was only around C rank. According to Beru's explanation, demon nobles should have had the power level of S rank to be considered normal. However, for various complicated reasons, Esil's power was only a fraction of a half. But no matter how weakened she is, I can't just take a demon outside the dungeon recklessly. For that reason, the method that Suho ultimately chose was, Do you want to enter the Shadow Dungeon? Enter. Schwak! Suho took Ezil to the Shadow Dungeon. The Shadow Dungeon was a space where only Shadow Soldiers could freely enter and exit, and it was an unsurpassed prison to confine demons. However, Ezil's reaction was quite surprising once they entered the Shadow Dungeon. Ah, to come back to the realm of rest. Essil, who saw the black and white world, started exclaiming in admiration with an ecstatic expression. Then she looked back at Suho and asked, How come you have the realm of rest within the shadow, even though you're not the shadow monarch? What is your relationship with Sir Jinwu? I'm his son. Son, oh my, are you Suho by any chance? Asil exclaimed in surprise and admiration, Wow! That little baby has grown up so much already. Humans really do grow up fast. Do you know me? Suho just blinked in response to Isil's question. Even though his sealed memories were slowly returning, he didn't remember every face he had seen when he was young. There were too many soldiers living in Sung Jinwu's shadow world. Suho looked away from Isil, who was happy to see him, and asked Beru, By the way, what is the Realm of Rest? It's another name for the Shadow Dungeon. Beru explained, there were many different expressions for the world ruled by the Shadow Monarch, the Shadow World, the world beyond death, 
and the realm of rest. Even other monarchs who were now dead also had worlds they ruled, but only the shadow monarch carried his world within his shadow. So this shadow dungeon is the world I rule? More precisely, it's the world that my lodge rules. But for some reason, his world was split in two when you were born. To be more exact, it multiplied. In any case, one of them became my shadow. Suho nodded. Enough with the small talk. It was time to get to the point. Suho looked at Essil and asked her straightforwardly, You said your name is Essil, right? Now that I saved you, tell me everything you know. What are the demons doing on Earth, and what happened in the demon world? Well, Essil opened her mouth bitterly. After the war ended, everything was fine at first. Since Sung Jinwu killed all the other nobles, House Radiru became the top demon in the ranking. Moreover, he let our family, who had nowhere to go, stay in his shadow world. At that time, the demon world had already lost its demon king and was wandering around the dimensional rifts in pieces. In that situation, Sung Jinwu allowed the demons of House Radiru, who had helped him, to reside in his world. But that was only temporary. We couldn't become inhabitants of the shadow world after all. Because yours are polluted souls? You know it well. As Suho had experienced, demons were basically mana-tainted spirits, so they could not be extracted as shadow soldiers. So in the end, we had no choice but to return to the demon world. No, to be E. Zacked, the demon world called us. The demon world? Mmm. Suddenly, a red gate leading to the demon world opened before us, who were living in the shadow world, and then it started sucking us in. The demon world that had lost its monarch was wandering around dimensional rifts, torn apart into pieces. A world without a monarch would inevitably call for one. It was only natural for the demon world to call upon the only demon noble family that still existed, the Radiru family. However, the demon world was maintained by strict laws of survival of the fittest, and might make right. Without Sung Jinwu's help, House Radiru, who was only ranked 20th, would not have had the power to dominate the demon realm. Then, the demons who had been hiding from the Shadow Monarch throughout the war came out again after the war ended and started to challenge the Radiru's seemingly weak authority. If only the Radiru family disappeared, we can become nobles too. Let's feast on the nobles and suck their pure blood. If we consume pure blood, our magic power will amplify. And so, all the demons united and began to attack House Radiru. House Radiru was originally the weakest among the nobles, so they lacked the power to stop the rebellion. Weak demons have no right to live. We were devoured like that, and our blood was sucked. Now I'm the only surviving demon noble. So that's why you've become weak? Yeah, I almost died several times, and much blood was sucked from me. That's why I've become weak. Beru, who was listening nearby, added a comment. From the moment demons are born, the power hierarchy is determined. It's not just about pure blood or mixed blood. Because the foundation of power lies in their innate blood, they become obsessed with consuming blood. It's similar to what happened with Grey. Suho nodded. Upon hearing Beru's words, Ezel vigorously nodded in agreement. Yes, that's right. That's why demons fear becoming weak so much, regardless of whether they are nobles or mixed bloods, because it's a world where the weak are devoured. That's why the ones who summoned me earlier were really strange. Strange? Hmm. They came to Earth by possessing the bodies of humans weaker than themselves. It's not a very demon-like behavior to make oneself weak. Not a very demon-like behavior. Suho realized what Essel was trying to say. Do you mean to say that there is someone behind the demons? Hmm. Actually, the way they summoned me earlier was also strange. Although us demons are good at destroying and killing, we don't know how to use magic to open dimensional walls forcefully. Then, did someone teach the demons? Who? Listening to their conversation, Beru sighed deeply. Could it be the Phantom World? Phantom World? Gate magic was originally a method frequently used by the king of demonic specters, Yogamund. The specter here originated from the word Hwange, which is a term that refers to a fictional or imaginary world. It can be translated as illusionary world, phantom world, or fantasy realm. The concept of Hwange is used to describe a parallel universe or alternate reality that exists alongside the real world. The phantom world. Suho mulled over Beru's words and drew a picture in his head. So, 
Are the soldiers of the demon world and the phantom world working together? And one more thing. Stardust. Mistburn, one of the ingredients of stardust. No, blue mist, the main ingredient of mistburn, was the magic of outer space that dissolved dimensional boundaries. It seems like the extra-dimensional beings are using these defeated soldiers for some purpose. Yes, I think so too. Beru nodded solemnly. Perhaps, the outer beings have already infiltrated Earth. It seemed like the invasion had already begun. Support the original in its official site if you can. You'll do us great service just by not publicizing our links to social medias. It is ridiculous to ask to be low-key when this novel is anything but that. However, every effort counts in the continuation of the translation. You can read ahead by purchasing the advanced chapters, but it is not required to have the full access of the novel as everything will be unlocked with time. What we lack in speed, we make it up in quality. Chapter 28, Wait. Suho felt a strange sensation. Looking back, all the recent incidents were connected. Guanak Mountain Field, the Hyena Guild, and Soul Station Field all shared one thing. They all appeared a year ago. Kiehek, come to think of it, it seems like the aliens have been hiding on Earth since a year ago. A year ago. Suho decided to start from here. Shall we try to look backward? If we search for dungeons, fields, and guilds that appeared a year ago, we might find something. If they found the demons, they could strengthen Vulcan's horn, and if they found any other traces of the outer beings, that would be great too. Oh, as expected, my little king is brilliant. It feels like I just taught you addition and subtraction the other day. Suho ignored Baru's chatter for a moment. Then, he remembered something. Yeah, there it was. The most famous area in Korea a year ago. The scene of that dreadful massacre. Magok. Suho's eyes flashed. Hunter Association Surveillance Division. No matter how much we investigate, it just keeps coming out. Team leader Han jae felt increasingly frustrated the more he investigated the hideout of the Hyena Guild, which had been completely destroyed. Listing all the atrocities the Hyena Guild had committed would require a report of at least 100 pages. Among them, all matters related to crime were transferred to the Police Hunter Division. The association focused on investigating things that fell outside the bounds of the law, such as stardust. In reality, stardust wasn't technically a narcotic, so using it wasn't necessarily illegal, but they couldn't just leave unidentified drugs alone. The Hunter Association had been continuously investigating how stardust was made and who made it, and they had finally found a clue at the Hyena Guild's hideout. It was a ledger that contained records of when and how much stardust the Hyena Guild had purchased and to whom they had sold it. This confirmed that the Guild was one of the distributors of stardust. If they followed the trail, they might be able to find out who was actually making the powder. But there were people who went into debt just to buy stardust. You could consider it a kind of investment. If you used stardust to explore high-level dungeons, you could pay off that debt pretty quickly. So they earned money and came back to the Hyena Guild to buy more Stardust? In the end, it seems like the Hyena Guild was the only one constantly profiting. There really is no separate economy here. But the problem was that most of the hunters listed in the ledger were missing for the past year. Most were probably just fodder for the boss monster controlling the Hyena Guild from behind the scenes. But as they continued to investigate the ledger, they discovered something strange. Among the missing persons, there were those marked with a red line. Among them were not only hunters, but also many non-awakened debtors. What are these people? Is there something different about them? Oh, team leader, take a look here. A subordinate showed some data to team leader Han jae If you look here, the date when a large amount of stardust was imported into Hyena is the same day that these missing persons were reported missing. Every single one of them. I see. Is there any connection? Hmm. The only thing that came to mind immediately was one possibility. Did they exchange them for stardust? Exchanged people for stardust? Team leader Han jae searched through the records again from the beginning, and finally, he discovered one fact that made his eyes widen. I'm sure. There is no record in the ledger of them paying Hyena for the stardust they purchased. It means they didn't pay with money. Really? Did they pay the value of stardust with people instead of money? 
Why? We'll have to find out now. If Hyena didn't make the Stardust themselves, then the ones who made it. At that moment, an urgent call arrived at the Surveillance Division. Team Leader, we received a RAR, E-Port. What report? I'm busy right now. Someone found the Stardust Factory. Depart immediately. When Team Leader Han Jayuk received the report and arrived in front of Seoul Station Field, everything had already ended. What the hell happened here? There were survivors who had been trapped in the factory and the hunters who rescued them, all exhausted and collapsed. In short, it's a long story. The captain explained everything that had happened to Team Leader Han Jayuk. A factory? They were making stardust in there? Who did this? The demons? As he listened to the explanation, the pieces of the puzzle that had been investigated recently were coming together in his mind. But he didn't have time to sit calmly and think right now. What? Is that true? Someone is still in there fighting alone against the demons? Yes, he said he will buy us some time to escape, and asked us to go ahead. Coog, please go in and help him quickly. Assistant Professor Im had been worried about Suho's safety for a while. At least in his eyes, Suho had barely managed to defeat even one demon he first encountered. But there were as many as ten of those demons in the factory. Suho said not to worry, that he would find a way out himself, but he must have said that to reassure us. That guy, just like he did in the Korea University dungeon, he's sacrificing himself for us. After hearing all the explanations, Team Leader Han Jayuk grabbed the weapon brought to him with a fierce expression. Understood. We will go in right away. Thud. Team Leader Han Jayuk's weapons were two steel shields huge enough to cover half his body. As soon as he grabbed the shields, a transparent aura enveloped his whole body. Iron Wall. At that moment, Assistant, Im realized who Han Jayuk really was. He was a C-rank tanker, who had been recognized for his skills and received offers from several famous guilds in the past. Looking at the hunters standing behind him, they all looked formidable. That's it, Suho is safe now. Team leader Han Jayuk led the association hunters confidently into Seoul Station. Suddenly, he turned around at the entrance and asked, By the way, what rank is the hunter who is still down there? Ah, uh, well, the raid captain hesitated and spoke puzzledly. He's an E-rank collector. What? The captain felt unjustly accused as the association hunters suddenly looked at him as if he were the biggest scoundrel in the world. It was very unfair. I'll have to find out about Mugok as soon as I get back. Suho finished all his work and left the factory, but once he tried to go up to the ground, he felt regretful for some reason. It was because of Brokai. I finally extracted a strong soldier like him as a shadow soldier. It's a shame to just let him go like this. The duration of the extracted shadow soldier was approximately one day. After that time, it automatically released and returned to nothingness. Suho didn't know when he could find a magic beast of a similar level again, so he wanted to use it as effectively as possible. Then, do you want to turn around? There are still many lizards nearby. That's a good idea. He decided to clean up this field while he was at it. Brokey, grr. Brokey, who had become a shadow soldier, lost its ability to speak. However, its intelligence remained, so there was no need for a long explanation. Fetch them all. As a beast, Brokey had a very keen sense of smell. When Suho's command came down, Brokey searched for and killed all the lizards hiding throughout the field. Then it brought all their bodies to Suho. Suho's level was so high that the lizards didn't give much experience, but it was still a case of every little bit helps. And this is all money. Chirp. Little king, if I may be so bold since there's so much, may I also have a bite? Just a bug. Am I a bug receiving only a bite? Men, this joke is a play on words in Korean. The first line, spoken by Beru, is a pun on the phrase imandeo, which means just one more bite. Suho replaces the word man, meaning more, with chung, which means insect or bug. So instead of saying just a bite, he says just a bug, which sounds similar, but has a different meaning. Beru looked puzzled at Suho's joke. Suho, who was using Brokey to hunt down the lizards, was now wearing a crow mask again. He used it before to pretend to be a young demon in front of other demons, but this time, it was for a completely different reason. In fact, this item had a small function. Item Crow Mask. 
Acquisition difficulty, E, type miscellaneous, a suspicious mask used by demons. When worn in the dark, the wearer's vision becomes brighter, can be stored in the inventory or sold at a store. It's better than night vision goggles. Thanks to his increased sense stat, he could identify objects even in the darkness. However, with the crow mask, the vague darkness disappeared completely, which he found pleasing. Since each of the demons had one of these nice items, Suho brought all the masks of the demons in the factory. However, the problem started from there. Demon. Huh? Keek. The association hunters, who entered the field just in time, encountered Suho wearing a crow mask. They had already heard from the hunters above ground that the demons wore crow masks. Moreover, beside Suho was a giant hyena, Brokey, looking extremely evil. Attack! No, wait. Before Suho could say anything, the hunter's attack aimed straight at Suho and started pouring down. Ding! An emergency quest has arrived. Emergency quest. Defeat the enemies. There are individuals with hostility toward the player nearby. Oh no! Refuse! Refuse! Suho was even forced to undertake an emergency quest because of their bloodlust. Just as he hurriedly refused the quest and tried to uncover his identity by removing the mask. Swoosh! I'll take care of this guy. Team leader Han Jayuk, who had approached him swiftly, swung his shield at Suho. At that moment, the other hunters all rushed towards Brokey. Just a moment, please listen to me. Iron wall throw. Flash. A transparent shield soared towards Suho like a giant wall. Little King, Baru cried desperately. In the end, Suho tightly clenched his hand that was about to take off the mask. First, let's subdue them. Swoosh, a black aura enveloped Suho's fist at that moment, and he threw a punch. He plunged it into the transparent shield that was pressuring him. But with that one punch, strength 45, bam, huh? The body of team leader Han Jayuk, who was attacking Suho, was bent at a right angle and bounced straight out with his shield. And then, bang, he was stuck in the wall far away. Huh? Suho, who had punched him, was also shocked and stopped in the same position. The eyes of the association hunters who witnessed the sight widened. Team leader? What is that? Thud. The wall where team leader Han Jaehyuk was stuck collapsed, and his face with his eyes rolled back was revealed. He had fainted. Hmm. I guess that was too much for humans. Well, you've been investing all your stats and strength so far. Next to Suho, Beru nodded, saying it was a natural result. Suho removed his crow mask with an awkward expression. Can we talk now? The hunters nodded their heads without hesitation. Support the original in its official site if you can. You'll do us great service just by not publicizing our links to social medias. It is ridiculous to ask to be low-key when this novel is anything but that. However, every effort counts in the continuation of the translation. You can read ahead by purchasing the advanced chapters, but it is not required to have the full access of the novel as everything will be unlocked with time. What we lack in speed, we make it up in quality. Chapter 29. Although there was a small hiccup, the aftermath was handled swiftly. Once the association hunters realized Suho was not a demon, they received his guidance and quickly arrived at the factory. By the way, where are all the demons? Upon arriving at the factory, they found only traces of battle, and there was no sign of the demons. As the hunters looked at Suho with suspicion, he made an awkward expression. Ha ha, yeah, maybe they all ran away while we were coming? Beru openly burped next to Suho, but no one suspected him. They just assumed he was a pet the size of a stuffed animal. Well, we did come too quickly. We immediately responded to the report. Although Beru openly cleaned himself next to Suho, no one suspected him. Despite his protruding belly, he seemed like a normal stuffed animal. At least we secured the scene, so that's fortunate. In fact, this was a great achievement. They found the factory where Stardust was being produced for the first time. Above all, they revealed the shocking fact that people's lives were sacrificed in the manufacturing process. Thank you very much. After a while, the association hunters who came out of the field gathered all the hunters on the scene, including Suho and Assistant Professor Im, and expressed their gratitude. Thanks to your report, we can prevent many crimes in the future. From now on, our association and police hunters will do our best to investigate. And they added one thing, and you will receive a reward for this incident. 
It turned out that there was a certain reward for those who reported the crime. Well, that's good. I should buy some meat or food for those short on blood with this money. Suho nodded, thinking of the alien races he had left behind in the Shadow Dungeon. Whether they were the last descendants of the canine clan or the surviving demon noble, they were nothing but hungry refugees to Suho. He opened his eyes and found an unfamiliar ceiling. Ah! Uh. Team leader, are you feeling better? Team leader Han Jeyuk raised his groggy body from the bed. White walls and the smell of disinfectant. It was a hospital. Han Jeyuk looked at his subordinates with a confused expression. Why am I here? Don't you remember? You fainted, sir. Fainted? Yes, someone punched you. Oh. Only then did he remember the fleeting memory. That crow mask. Team leader Han Jehuk hurriedly got up from his bed and shouted, What about the demon? What happened to the demon? That person wasn't a demon, sir. Huh? What it wasn't? No, that person was the hunter we went to find. The subordinate sighed deeply as he looked at the bewildered Han Jehuk and explained everything that happened while he was unconscious. So, it was all our misunderstanding. Suddenly, the expression on team leader Han Jeyuk's face hardened. What? What did you just say? What do you mean? Summoner? Who's the summoner? Who else? The hunter who knocked you out with one punch, team leader. What? It seems like he hadn't misheard. An expression of disbelief appeared on Han Jeyuk's face. Are you saying that I got knocked out by a summoner? Me, Han Jeyuk? Yes, so please don't let your guard down and use your skills more actively from now on. I did use my skills. What do you mean? I used my skills, damn it! At this point, even the subordinate looked confused. Then why did you pass out? You're a C-rank tanker team leader. That's what I'm saying. But wait, you used your real skills and still got knocked out with one punch? Does that make any sense? He was an E-rank hunter. E-rank? Are you kidding me? Han Jeyuk glared at his subordinate with a fierce expression. However, the subordinate just shrugged his shoulders nonchalantly. Why would I joke around after eating an expensive meal? I even checked the hunter's license, and that person was really E-rank. What was their name again? Sung Suho? Sung Suho? Upon hearing that name, an image of a face flashed D through team leader Han Jeyuk's mind. Coincidentally, the name of the rookie E-rank hunter that he had personally measured the mana of not long ago was also Sung Suho. Surely it can't be. Yeah, that person. I'm not trying to poison your mind. I was with you at the time, too. It was Sung Suho, the E-rank hero of the Korea University dungeon, that we personally measured the mana of, who made you pass out, sir. Really? That college student at the time? How on earth? Team leader Han Jeyuk had an expression of disbelief but the subordinate employee replied sullenly, it must have been a measurement error. Otherwise, would a hunter who can make you use your skill and still be knocked out with a punch even exist at E-rank? I would estimate at least C-rank. No, who would even get punched like that? Anyway, I apologized on your behalf. I told him to come back to the association for a re-evaluation later. Well, that concludes the briefing during your unconsciousness. Well then, I'll leave for the day. His damaged reputation couldn't be restored. Team leader Han Jeyuk, who had passed off all the work to his subordinates and slept soundly, muttered dejectedly at the back of the subordinate who left work as soon as he finished his work. These days, these kinds of things. As he did, he suddenly recalled the moment when he had fainted. E-rank was a measurement error? Well, that's okay. It was a rare accident, but it had happened before. However, one question still remained. He was definitely a summoner. Judging by the fact that there was also a large summon creature that looked like a hyena right next to him, it was certain that he was a summoner. So how? How did he have such power? Could that power also be some kind of variation of a summoning skill? Hmm. Team leader Han Jeyuk stroked his chin as he recalled the appearance of Sung Suho he had seen at the hospital. A fairly decent-looking and ordinary college student, he had a tall stature and a moderately muscular physique, but that was about it. He didn't seem like a hunter with tremendous power at first glance. Well, I'll find out someday. But then, a memory suddenly came to mind. The day when he measured Sung Suho's mana and exchanged the customary greetings upon parting. Then, Mr. Sung Suho, we look forward to your great contributions in the future. Like that day, 
a warm smile formed on team leader Han Jaek's lips. This is really something to look forward to. He was excited to see what kind of hunter Sung Suho would become. And at the Fiend Guild, Vice Master Lee Min Sung was furious to the core. What did you say? The factory was perfectly fine. Why did it suddenly disappear? Well, it was reported by some hunters and the association. Puck. Ack. Lee Min Sung kicked the stomach of the man, making excuses in front of him, causing him to squirm. He then stomped and pounded his body against the wall. So what? What does the association have to do with it? Do these guys think I'm some kind of a pushover? If they took the money, they should have brought the goods properly, no matter what. Oh my, Vice Master, we are also victims. The demons in the factory disappeared overnight without a trace. The A-class hunter's footwork was too terrible to call it a vent simply. If the man being stepped on wasn't a hunter, his heart would have stopped after the first blow. After venting for a while, Lee Min-sung finally stopped. He slapped his cheek and grabbed his collar to wake him up. Ha! So what happened to all the demons? Cough. That, that is... The man quickly spewed out all the information he knew. Lee Min-sung narrowed his eyes after hearing all the information. So the location of the factory was discovered by hunters who happened to be passing by? Yes, I heard they fought the demons and rescued survivors. Do you think that makes sense? Uh, well, come on. Lee Min Sung's anger began to boil again as he grabbed the man's neck. It wasn't even a large guild. It was just a team made up of D-ranks and E-ranks collectors, captained by a C-rank healer. That kind of team defeated ten demons? Even I? Even you what? I don't think it makes sense either. With Lee Min Sung's intimidation, the man closed his eyes tightly and shouted. Only then did Lee Min Sung let go of his collar. As if he had never been angry, he straightened the man's collar and asked softly, So what do you think? You have to give a more useful opinion this time if you want to survive. I think it must have been planned by the association. Hmm. As you know, Vice Master, the association guys were always chasing the source of stardust, but somehow they found out the location of the factory this time. And, but if they blatantly investigate stardust, which is still not illegal, they will be restricted by guilds who handle stardust like us. So, so, you they up some half-assed guys as scarecrows and pretended to move after receiving a tip-off? Yes, that's exactly it. Okay, that makes sense. Lee Min Sung nodded as if convinced. Right, I've seen those demons myself. They're definitely not opponents that can be dealt with by only lower-ranked hunters. Yes, that's right. So, yes? Of course, there must be a countermeasure, right? Again, Terrifying energy emanated from Lee Min Sung and choked the employee. Yes, of course, the factory is not just one. Seoul Station Field was convenient for delivery because of the subway line, but if you look around, the demons may have hidden stardust factories everywhere. Everywhere? Hell, Joseon is real then. Why are there so many demons? Finally, Min Sung seemed satisfied and chuckled. However, his eyes looking at the employee were not laughing at all. Let me say it again. You know that I only helped you guys because of the stardust, right? Well, of course, we're always grateful to you, Vice Master. Then do your job. If you saved a drowning dog, they should repay the favor, right? Grrr. At the same time as he answered, fur started sprouting from the face of the man who transformed into a werewolf. The man was none other than the remnants of the hyena guild that the association was chasing. However, now he had nowhere else to go, so he had become a loyal dog to Vice Master Lee Min Sung, with whom he had been trading. But his true feelings were different. Darn it, I'm in big trouble. The power of the blood will completely disappear in a few days. The ability of the Hyena Guild members to transform into werewolves by drinking the blood of the Canine Clan lasted only ten days. If they didn't drink blood periodically once every ten days, not only would their beast transformation skill disappear, but they would also revert back to being ordinary humans. If Vice Master Lee Min Sung learned about this fact, he would turn against him mercilessly. Before that happens, I have to do something. I have to find the missing wolf cub in Guanak Mountain or find traces of other monarchs similar to it. It was a pipe dream. Vice Master Lee Min Sung and the werewolf facing each other contemplated their own goals. Meanwhile, Suho, holding the reward money, entered a butcher shop. Hello, welcome. The butcher, 
who happened to be preparing meat, greeted him with a friendly smile and asked, What kind of meat can I get for you? A pig? Do you sell it as a whole? No, make it two. Support the original in its official site if you can. You'll do us great service just by not publicizing our links to social medias. It is ridiculous to ask to be low-key when this novel is anything but that. However, every effort counts in the continuation of the translation. You can read ahead by purchasing the advanced chapters, but it is not required to have the full access of the novel as everything will be unlocked with time. What we lack in speed, we make it up in quality. Chapter 30. Growl. The canine wolf, Gray, was crouching and staring at his prey. Canine wolf. His level had gone up a bit, but he was still the size of a palm. However, as expected of the descendant of the great canine clan, Gray had grown to the point where he could easily hunt one or two goblins. Thanks to this, Gray was now walking with his tail held high and full of energy. Of course, handling three goblins at once was still difficult, so he would quickly retreat to the small den prepared beforehand if three goblins attacked at once. The goblins would eventually give up the chase because the den was too small. While Gray was adapting to life in the Shadow Dungeon by controlling and taking down the large and stupid goblins, he was suddenly faced with a great danger one day. An intruder had come to the Shadow Dungeon. Growl! Gray secretly followed the intruder with a cautious look in his eyes. The intruder looked quite strong but seemed to have no strength after starving for a long time. He could do it. That very moment ignited Gray's fighting spirit. He could. Hunting prey stronger than oneself was a very honorable task. Gulp. Gray held his breath and waited for the moment the prey showed an opening with a tense expression. And finally, flutter. The creature moved. What are you looking at? Growl? Essel's hand lifted one hind leg of Gray, who was crouching in the corner and glaring at her. Growl! Oops! Caught! Gray flapped his short legs in surprise, but realizing that he couldn't escape from Essil's grasp no matter how much he struggled, he barked fiercely with a rebellious look. Grr! Oh, seriously, if you weren't Suho's pet, I would have eaten you up by now. Essil looked at Gray and licked her lips regretfully. I can't believe that the descendant of the Beast Monarch is stuck in a place like this. Although he was just a small bite-sized creature, the blood and flesh of the canine clan were a very valuable elixir in and of itself. Growl! Swish! Swish! What? Would you like to taste it? Gray twisted his snout around and eagerly licked Issel's hand that was holding his back. Even so, his eyes continued to glare at her boldly. You're a funny little pup, Issel chuckled. Well, you probably know instinctively that if you were to eat me, you would gain strength. Because we're actually in the same position. Essil herself was the only surviving demon noble in the demon world. In other words, she was the only candidate to become the king of demons someday. Just as the demons coveted Essil's blood, the pure blood flowing in her veins was imbued with valuable power. And that's probably the same for you too, isn't it? This arrogant little puppy was the only surviving member of the canine clan, who may one day become the beast monarch. Essil suddenly had a strange feeling. To think that two pure bloods from a clan destroyed by war are gathered here. What was Suho's purpose of picking us up? Swish, swish, swish! Ah, seriously, stop drooling! At that moment, you have entered the Shadow Dungeon. Shwa! Ah! Suho and Baru had just entered the Shadow Dungeon, holding one, no, two fresh pigs. What? Growl? Essel and Gray turned their heads at the same time. Rumble. A rumbling noise echoed from Essel and Baru's stomachs. At that sound, Suho chuckled and pushed the pigs toward them. Here, demons like meat, don't they? Yeah, as long as it's not grass. Essil quickly threw Gray who she had been carrying behind her and casually took the pig from Suho. Then Gray, who had been thrown back, quickly returned and greedily bared his teeth in front of Essil. And plop, grr, kiong, Gray suddenly flipped his belly up and began writhing around. But Essil was firm. No, you can't have it. Go back. This is my food. Pant, pant, pant. It's too late to wag your tail now. Growl. The wolf cub and the demon noble fought over the pig. Suho, watching them from behind, couldn't hide his disappointment. Why do carnivores seem to be gathering a round me more and more these days? Chomp, chomp, chomp. Kike, this is delicious. There were two whole pigs. 
Beru was eagerly tearing and eating the remaining pig at the back, and even the brave Gare to touch Beru's food. Well then, let's eat. Isil plunged her hand deep into the pig's body. Then, swoosh! A large whole pig began to shrivel around her hand. Oh, beside the fascinated Suho, Beru explained. She's absorbing the mana inside the pig's body. Every demon has a different way of eating, but demon nobles prefer neat methods. Oh, what a surprise. You're the explanation king bug, aren't you? Yes, I'm a bug. Beru nodded as if it were natural, then he returned to his own pig and opened his mouth wide. Gulp, slurp, chomp, chomp. He seemed to prefer a messy way of eating, unlike Essil. Suho smiled and turned his gaze away. Well then, I'll be going. Sniff, sniff. Croc, croc. The goblins in the wild who caught the smell of the meat were gradually gathering around. Suho reached out. Hup! One of the leaders suddenly floated up in the air and kicked its legs. Ruler's authority. A faint smile crossed Suho's lips. Should I do the daily quest? Daily quest cleaning the shadow dungeon. One hundred goblins. Incomplete. One hundred. Ten goblin chiefs. Incomplete. Ten. One goblin commander. Incomplete. The completion reward has arrived. Do you want to check the reward? He realized that his abilities had improved again. Now I guess even a hundred goblins wouldn't be a morning workout. Clap, clap. Suho lightly brushed his hand among the goblin corpses. Rakan's fang and Vulcan's horn were on either side of him, stuck into the ground. Looks like there won't be a hidden quest like last time. He tried killing a few more this time, but hidden rewards seemed one time only. Luckily, the regular daily quest rewards were abundant enough. The following rewards are prepared. Reward 1. Stats Recovery. Reward 2. Ability Points plus 3. Reward 3. One random box. First, he decided to leave the stats recovery reward unclaimed. I'll save this for a real emergency. While he could recover HP with potions, they were slow and the amount recovered was small. On the other hand, the stats recovery reward was an immediate recovery. It's best to invest all of my ability points in strength. No matter what, strength was the key to becoming stronger. The higher his strength stat, the higher his power and speed. And a random box. It was not a hidden reward this time, so a normal random box appeared in Suho's hands. When he opened the box, a small ring rolled out. You have obtained item, ashen ring. A ring? As Suho pulled out the dull-colored ring, the item description appeared in his mind. Item ashen ring. Acquisition difficulty. D. Type accessory sense plus five. It raises my sense stat by five points. Suho's eyes widened. Despite its appearance, it was a very good item. Sense stat was a stat that heightened one's five senses and increased the ability to sense danger. In other words, it would increase the ability to detect surprise attacks. Suho casually slid the ring onto his finger. Despite the ring being loose, it wasn't a problem. You have equipped item Ashen Ring. The Ashen Ring disappeared from his finger and the stat increase was applied. Sense. Even a plain random box can be quite good. It feels like spinning a prize wheel. As Suho completed his daily quest, the meal had ended without him noticing. However, Essil, who had been watching Suho hunt goblins from behind all this time, had a puzzled expression on her face. It wasn't polite to help someone else hunt, so she just watched, but the fact that goblins were wandering around here was unusual in itself. This is strange. What is it? How did the dimensional refugees end up here? Dimensional refugees? I mean those guys. After the Monarch's War, the surviving defeated soldiers were sucked into the dimensional rifts and ended up everywhere. They are called dimensional refugees. It was a natural consequence. Since all the Monarchs who were the focal points had disappeared, their underlings were scattered everywhere. But this doesn't seem like a coincidence. What do you mean it's not a coincidence? Biru also showed interest in Esau's words. Well, to be honest, breaking through the dimensional wall is a very difficult and cumbersome task. I know that well. I would have returned to my liege long ago if it were easy. Beru nodded. In the old days, only the monarch of transfiguration could break through the gate to another dimension. Even that was by no means an easy task. You know that too, Beru. So do you think mere remnants of the war easily cross the dimensional wall? Oh, Beru's eyes flashed. Suho caught on to what Essel was saying and nodded. Could it be because of the blue mist? That's right. 
One day, the blue mist from outer space began to mess up our dimensional barrier. How twisted it must have become for even weak and feeble goblins to come into the world ruled by the Shadow Monarch. Essiel shrugged, saying it was an absurd event. I agree with that. Rakan's fang in Suho's hand suddenly interrupted the conversation. There is no way that the defeated soldiers would have entered the world ruled by the victor of the war on their own without going insane. This suggests that the dimensional rift was severely twisted. Oh. During the conversation, Suho suddenly realized an important fact. Beru, let me ask you one thing. Yep. Didn't you say that Father's army and the apostles from the outer universe had equal strength? Yes, that's right. Both were so evenly matched that my liege did not dare to come to Earth directly and sent me instead. If you think of it the other way around, would the outsiders even dare to come over to Earth right now? Huh? Beru's eyes widened instantly. Oh? Then they widened again. Isn't that right? You're correct, little king. Of course it must be like that. Beru nodded frantically. Suho also nodded and muttered, so they're using the dimensional refugees. It's clear that they've gathered the refugees because they can't come themselves. This is what is known as killing two birds with one stone. And this was not a bad situation at all from the perspective of the dimensional refugees. From their point of view, Earth was a very easy place to kill, steal, and conquer. And one more thing. Suho finally realized the meaning of his daily quest. Daily quest. Cleaning. I need to clean up the goblins as quickly as possible and find and seal the dimensional rift they came through. That's right. If you leave the dimensional refugees alone, the outsiders from the other dimension will eventually find out about this place. Or, to be more precise, they'll find out about me. Suho was fully aware of his situation. I am my father's only weakness. There was now one more reason why he needed to become stronger. Support the original in its official site if you can. You'll do us great service just by not publicizing our links to social medias. It is ridiculous to ask to be low-key when this novel is anything but that. However, every effort counts in the continuation of the translation. You can read ahead by purchasing the advanced chapters, but it is not required to have the full access of the novel, as everything will be unlocked with time. What we lack in speed, we make it up in quality.